Uh, welcome to DocPoint, uh, Helsinki Documentary Film Festival, Finland's only documentary film festival. My name is Eija Niskanen and I'm moderating this Q&A with Wang Chung, Chung uh, director of um, All About My Sisters. Uh, this film is nominated for the DocPoint Vajeli Award for uh, Best International Documentary Film. So, Director Wang Chong, uh, where are you now exactly situated? Hi, uh, my name is Wang Chong. I'm the director of uh, One of My Sisters. And you are now actually in the United States, are you? Yeah, I'm in the United States. I'm living in Philadelphia. Okay. And I heard that you are doing a master's in, in the US. Yeah, I am still a graduate student at Temple University. Yes, and uh, you actually started making this film at a very young age, uh, at uh, when you were twenty-two, and I guess you. Are, I heard that you are now twenty-nine, so it took seven years. Uh, but um, all about my sisters is about the consequences about the China's one-child policy. But you made it a very personal film by filming uh, your family members. So how, how did you come up, come about this idea of making this film and why did you want to make it? The first time I, uh, I started to interview my mother about uh, my younger sister's birth story was actually inspired by a project uh, initiated by uh, if China original studio where I was volunteer in. And that project is called The Story of Birth, which uh, aims at inviting everybody to invite, uh, to, invite uh, uh, to do an interview with their mothers about their own birth story. I was part of it. So I took a HD camera back home and I interviewed my mother with, about my own birth story, but she ended up uh, Given more than that, she talked a lot about my younger sister Jean's birth story, which was uh, familiar with me, but uh, that was my first time to really sit down and have a conversation with my mother about that, that story, that hidden story. Um, that story that has been hidden for like many, many years. Um, so um, I, that kind of, uh, it was some, something, it was change, it, it was a strange experience to me, but that's something that I really want to continue to have with my mother. So I went back to my college uh, after the interview. And then one day I received a message from my younger sister, oh, sorry, so from my elder sister, Lee, saying that she's pregnant and she would uh, abort the baby if it's a girl. Um, and then suddenly I got really shocked and it reminded me of my uh, younger sister's birth story that my mother told me and they all connected together. Like I was wondering why like 20 years later what happened to my mother is uh, still happening to my elder sister and uh, uh, what happened to my younger sister is going to happen to my nephew or niece um, that has not born yet. So uh, with that question, I decided to go home and uh, stay with my family to ask questions about everything that I don't understand and to uh, make a film about them. That's how I started to make a all about my sisters. It was uh, started with a question about a family history, about family history instead of uh, one child policy or something bigger. Mm. And this is a very traumatic uh, history because the the abandoned uh, Jean is an abandoned girl on birth. And um, mm, how did you kind of like? Uh, was it hard to persuade your family members to be part of this film, to be interviewed about such painful memories? It is hard. Uh, it is hard in a sense that uh, 
it's hard for me to ask these questions because it, it pushes both me and my family member to go back to that history, that painful story. Uh, it's also hard to for them to retell the story from the beginning to the end, the entire story. And it's also hard for my younger sister to uh, to listen to this story. That's why when I finished this film, when I asked her if you want to watch this film, she always said that uh, she doesn't want to watch it because it's too painful for her. Yeah, so it's definitely very difficult for us to make this film. Yes, but um, when, when I watched the film, um, I felt like there are many scenes where you kind of like forget that somebody is filming. It looks so natural. So did it happen along the way that your family kind of like started forgetting that you are filming them? Yeah, that's true. I guess uh, one of the reasons one of, one of the reasons is that I've been filming them for a long time, like for uh, I've been filming them for more than three years when I was at home. Like I filmed them in a day in a daily basis. I, I took my camera every day. So time uh, when with the time went by, they get used to my camera and. Camera become part of me, part of my body. Camera become like an extension of my body, so that they took they stay camera as as me, as a family member. So they forget it easily. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, uh, this film uh, is also um not only about um, this one child policy and its effects, but it's really also a, a film about sisters and sisterhood, I think in a way, like the very complicated um, relationship between you three, three sisters. Can you tell a little bit more about that? Uh, yes, sure. Uh, it's... Um... It's a film about one child policy, but also a film about my relationship to my two sisters. Uh, one is uh, my relationship to my younger sister, who I was really, uh, I was really close with, but I didn't understand her her birth story for a long time. And then um, my relationship to my younger, my, my elder sister, who. I was very like I kept a distance with her since I was a child because there were many like unhappy things happened between us. And then uh, when I received a message from my elder sister saying that she's pregnant and she's going to abort baby, I was like, well, we were being sisters for for more than 20 years, but I still don't understand her and I don't understand uh, uh, what is going to happen to her. So I think that's a good, very good opportunity for me to get closer to her, to listen to her, to know more about her. And uh, uh, yeah, that's it. So it's basically, a, like, it's basically a journey of me getting closer to my two sisters and understand them more. Mm -hmm. um, I think like, uh, if I think, uh, think about like the different formats of a uh, documentary, like where is this, in, in part your documentary is, especially in the beginning part, like uh, almost like digging in the past through, like trying to find the truth. But at the same time, it is also like this Frederick Weisman kind of like, you know, follow up, follow up uh, documentary because we don't know what, uh, you, you didn't know what is going to happen in the end. Like, will your sister abort the baby or will Chin, like in the end, Chin leaves, etc. cetera. Um, did you have these two formats in mind when you were filming? No, I didn't. I had no like pre. Uh, uh, I didn't have a, a plan about 
that these two keep making these two formats together because everything just happened. And I just mm -hmm. borrowed, borrowed everything uh, while shooting them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, going back to the kind of like the very traumatic uh, one child policy, um, in the film it says that it was very, like it was harshest in the 90s. And when we see like uh, your sister in the hospital and there are these signs like, we, like don't test or don't abort based on gender or the fetus. But you hear some conversations about like your sister gets to know like what, what, the, what the gender of, the, of the, you know, her, her child is going to be. So in the end, like they secretly tell and you have managed to shoot that also like how can you tell more about like these kinds of uh, policies? Yeah, it's still going on, even though uh, in recent years, the policy is like open to two child, two children policy. And then the government is encouraging every family to have more children. But back then, when I was filming, it's still one child policy was still going on, um, in in a way. Um, but uh, uh, even though that the government said that uh, um, a ban a abortion of babies based on their gender is uh, prohibited, but uh, families like in in my hometown they still have this tendency of uh, preference of boys. So it still happens in my hometown and I live in some other places in China too. So yeah, it's, it's gone, but it's still happening in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, in the end, we see Jin and her, her son leaving for a bigger city uh, to find a be uh, look for a better life, like how are they doing nowadays? Uh, Jean and her husband went to a different city to uh, make money, and then they work in a factory together uh, to pay to pay back their debt, and they are doing pretty good. They are their life is getting better and better after leaving, uh, leaving my hometown. But uh, at the same time, her relationship to my parents, uh, to my family, especially to my parents, is also getting better with the help of distance and time. Yes, because it, in the documentary, we see that she is very like untrustful of, of um, her parents. Yeah because he knows that, that uh, they abandoned her, your parents. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's because she knows that her, her parents, my, our parents abandoned her, but also because uh, the way that my parents, uh, the way that they get together, the way that they communicate is very difficult. Like the way that my, especially the way that my my father treat my elder, my younger sister is a little bit like difficult because my father is always a, a little bit abusive father figure in my family. And that's what, what Jean doesn't like and doesn't get used to it when, while she got a lot of love from her adoptive parents. Mm -hmm. so that pattern of uh, difference uh, the uh, different parenthood makes also like in a uh, realistic, a more realistic way makes her keeps a distance with my parents. Mm -hmm. Yes, your, your film is a very intimate way to depict like the change in China, China's society. And are you planning, planning in the future to to make similar kind of documentaries with somehow like very intimately study China and its changes? Uh, I would like to, but uh, it's hard for me to make a plan, uh, to make a plan about making such a documentary about uh, 
such a, such an intimate documentary about my uh, about people that I know, but also about uh, the society of China because everything is because everything is happening uh, in a way that I can't control that I can predict. But uh, I would love to um, in the future if I get a story or if I have an idea that comes up to me, I would love to make a similar documentary. So I'm planning to make a, a tautology of uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Shen Lao Bing's, what is what, which is called birth, uh, Asian illness and death, which is four step, four steps of uh, uh, human life in Buddhist uh, um, ideology, and uh, I want to use this uh, this four themes to. Uh, at first, uh, all about my sisters is definitely about birth, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I want to make the other three films about uh, aging, illness, and death to uh, keep a close to to say what's happening in China society uh, closely, but uh, maybe not necessarily and not necessarily intimate documentaries. They may be might be stories about other people that probably I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yes. And have this uh, All About My Sisters been shown in China yet? No, no. Okay. So the premiere there uh, is still, you are still waiting for it. <laughs> uh, I didn't show it uh, to China. It, it's also because my parents, it's also because of my parents' request. Mm. They don't want uh, people in our country to say their story. Okay, I see it. It's very traumatic. Yes. Well, uh, it was really interesting to talk to you and, and about this very, very important and interesting documentary. It, it really gives audience different kinds of insights into China than what we see in the news. Do you? Yes. So thank you for talking with uh, Doc Point. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you. And I hope that the audience uh, also finds the film as intriguing as I did. So so bye-bye uh, and have a nice day. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>